to forgive in. Good day everyone. My name is Lua Mayowa. And today's episode on reality, we will be walking into a topic that often sparks a lot of questions and even some confusion in Christianity. And I title it Grace Taken for Granted. Please have it in mind that this is just a personal view. Now, the view and fool. Just because Christ has paid the price, should Christian misuse the grace he has given to us. We all know Christ's sacrifice on the cross was a complete and finished work. He paid the price for our sins once and for all. But does that give us a free pass to do whatever we want? A big question indeed. So, what exactly is grace? According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it means or says unmerited divine assistance given to humans for their regeneration or sanctification. Now, let's look at it from the scripture. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. It says, For it is by grace we have been saved through faith, and this is not from ourselves. It is the gifts of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. In a nutshell, grace means that God loves us, blesses us, and forgives us. Not because we have done anything to deserve it, but because of his mercy. Jesus paid the ultimate price for our sins and through a sacrifice we are set free from the bondage of sin. But yes, the thing, while grace is a gift, it is not a license to live however we want and that's where the misuse of grace comes into play. And this is so common whereby Many Christians would always see some scriptures to back up their sins and disguise. Some people think that because Christ has paid the price, they are free to live in sin, knowing that they will be forgiven. This mindset is dangerous and messes the heart of what grace really is. I need to stress this here. Grace is not a license to sin. In Romans chapter 6 verse 1 to 2, Brother Paul addresses this very issue. He said, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may abound? God forbid. We are those who are dead to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Brother Paul makes it clear just because we have received grace doesn't mean we can continue in sin. The grace of God is meant to transform us, not to enable us to live in disobedience. It is not a free pass to indulge in sinful behavior. Here's a way to think about it. Imagine someone bails you out of a financial debt that you could never pay on your own. The natural response to that gift as in to go and get yourself deeper into debt. I know. <laughs> no, you wouldn't do that. 
you would want to live responsibly and not go into it again, right? Good. In the same way, Christ paid our debt, our debt of sin, and our response to that amazing gift should be to live a life that honors Him, not to fall back into the same habit He rescued us from. To live under grace means to live in freedom from sin, not freedom to sin. It means that we are no longer enslaved to the desires of the flesh, but we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to live a life that reflects Christ. In Titus chapter 2 verse 11 to 12, the Bible says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people, it teaches us to say no to ungodly and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. Grace teaches us to turn away from sin, not indulge in it. It empowers us to say no to things that separate us from God and yes to the things that brings us closer to Him. Grace is a powerful motivator for righteous living. Having understood what grace feels like, let's look at what grace wants us to do, for grace demands something from us. When we accept Christ's grace, we are called to live a transformed life, a changed life with this verses. Consent not, we'll find that in the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. My son. If sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Number two, yea be yea. Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than this cometh of evil. Number three, Psalms chapter 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 Abstain from all appearance of evil. 5. We shouldn't be a part of the mouth worshippers and doing otherwise. Titus chapter 1, verse 16 if they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good works reprobate. This transformation we are walking into here is not something we achieve on our own, but it is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, the old all things are become new. Grace gives us the power to walk in this newness of life. It changes us from the inside out. We are no longer defined by our past mistakes or sins. We are new creations in Christ. And as new creations, we strive to live a life that reflects the characters of Christ. I also feel grace isn't a one-time gift we accept and then forget about it. It's an ongoing invitation to live in the freedom and power of the Holy Spirit, growing in righteousness, holiness, and love. Having understood what grace feels like, now let's see the drastic side of taking grace for granted. Why 
while God's grace is limitless, it is not cheap. It came at a great cost, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. When we take grace for granted, we make the sacrifice that Christ made for us irrelevant. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to 27, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. This verse is to remind us that grace isn't a get out of jail free card to keep sinning without consequences, but understand that just because we got it free doesn't mean there wouldn't be any price to pay for it when we lose it. In conclusion, just because Christ has paid the price doesn't mean we should misuse grace. Grace is not an excuse to live in sin, but a gift that empowers us to live in righteousness. It is a gift we should treasure and honor, not to be taken for granted. If you're listening to this and finding it hard to balance grace and righteousness, remember this. Grace doesn't just free us from sin. It frees us to become righteous. For anything that is against righteousness that we want to indulge in, our growth in the world of God and Spirit will notify us. And if we fail to listen, destruction is near. Thanking all my listeners and passerby for tuning in today. We appreciate the gesture. Please do well to tap on the like button and kindly subscribe. To be the first to be notified when we upload another episode on reality. And if you have any comments, questions or corrections you would like us to know about, please share it in the comment section so we can keep updating ourselves in the word of God. Do have a lovely, graceful day and forth and stay great. Remember, Christ is the only way. Walk, W-A-L-K, in the fullness of God's grace and live a life that honors the one who paid the price for it. Join us next Saturday as we bring to you more realities. Bye-bye. Welcome to Forgiving. Forgiving.